Hey there. So, I'm glad you get to see my face again. <laughs> I wish I could see yours, know that you are so missed, um, and that I can't wait for us to see one another again, face to face, not through a screen. But I do have a video for you, and I do have a book for you. So, um, my book is called Enemy Pie, and over the next couple of lessons that you see me reading, um, we're gonna be focusing on kindness. So what kindness looks like when you're kind to other people's and when you're kind to yourself. So we're just gonna dive in. Thankfully, um, I just ate my lunch, so I'm not hungry, but I, when I think of pie, I start to get super hungry. I love pie. But if you look a little closer on our book, you can see that this pie looks disgusting has worms and leaves, yuck. So we're gonna dive right into our book, Enemy Pie by Derek Munson, and it's illustrated by Tara Callahan King. Okay. It should have been the perfect summer. My dad helped me build a tree house in our backyard. My sister was at camp for three whole weeks and I was on the best baseball team in town. It should have been a perfect summer but it wasn't. Um, I don't know about you, but I just read the first page and I can already relate so much to this book. I thought that this past summer was gonna be an awesome summer, but with COVID, our summers looked a little bit different, right? Like we couldn't travel a lot. We weren't in school um, as quickly as we would have been. Um, so our summer, maybe for some of us, or in some ways was a little bit of a bummer. So. This book, I can already connect with. So let's see what else happened. It was all good until Jeremy Ross moved into the neighborhood right next door to my best friend Stanley. I did not like Jeremy Ross. He laughed at me when he struck me out in a baseball game. He had a party on his trampoline and I wasn't even invited, but my best friend Stanley was. Jeremy Ross was the one and only person on my enemy list. I never even had an enemy list until he moved into the neighborhood, but as soon as he came along, I needed one. I hung it up in my treehouse where Jeremy Ross was not allowed to go. Dad understood stuff like enemies. He told me that when he was my age, he had enemies too, but he knew of a way of how to get rid of them. I asked him to tell me how. Tell you how, I'll show you how, he said. He pulled up a really old recipe book off the kitchen shelf. Inside, there was a worn out scrap piece of paper with faded writing. Dad held it up and squinted at it. Enemy pie, he said, satisfied. I wonder who in your life you can come to with problems or just issues that you have. For our book, it was the dad. Maybe for you, it's your mom or your sister or your grandma or your grandpa, or your uncle or a friend. Maybe it's your neighbor. You may be wondering what exactly is in enemy pie. I was wondering too, but dad said the recipe was so secret he couldn't even tell me. I decided it must be magic. I begged him to tell me something, anything. I will tell you this, he said, enemy pie is the fastest known way to get rid of enemies. Now, of course, this got my mind working. What kinds of things, disgusting things, would I put into a pie for an enemy? I brought dad some weeds from the garden, but he just shook his head. I brought him earthworms and rocks, but he didn't think he needed those. I gave him the gum I've been chewing on all morning and he gave it right back to me. So gross. I went out to play alone. I shot baskets until the ball got stuck on the roof. I threw a boomerang that never came back to me and all the while I listened to the sounds of my dad chomping and stirring and blending the ingredients of enemy pie. This could be a great summer after all. Enemy pie was going to be awful. I tried to imagine how horrible it must smell or worse yet, what it might look like. But when I was in the backyard looking for ladybugs, I smelled something really, really good. And as far as I could tell, it was coming for, from our kitchen and I was a bit confused. I went in to ask dad what was wrong. Enemy pie shouldn't smell this good. But dad was smart. If enemy pie smelled bad, your enemy would never eat it, he said. I could tell he had made enemy pie before. The buzzer rang and dad put on the oven mitts and pulled out the pie and pulled the pie out of the oven. 
It looked like a plain old pie. It looked good enough to eat. I was catching on. But still, I wasn't really sure how this enemy pie thing worked. What exactly did it do to my enemies? Maybe it made their hair fall out or their breasts dinky. Maybe it made bullies cry. I asked dad, but he was no help. He wouldn't tell me a thing. But when the pie cooled, he filled me in on my job. He talked quietly. There is one part of enemy pie that I can't do. In order for it to work, you need to spend a day with your enemy. Even worse, you have to be nice to him. It's not easy, but that's the only way that enemy pie can work. Are you sure you wanna go through with this? Of course I was. It sounded horrible, it was scary, but it was worth a try. All I had to do was spend one day with Jeremy Ross and then he'd be out of my hair for the rest of my life. I rode my bike to his house and knocked on his door. When Jeremy opened the door, he seemed surprised. He stood on the other side of the screen door and looked at me, waiting for me to say something. I was nervous. Can you play? I asked. He looked confused. I'm gonna ask my mom, he said. He came back with his shoes in his hand. His mom walked around the corner to say hello. You boys stay out of trouble, she said, smiling. We rode bikes for a while and played on the trampoline. Then we made some water balloons and threw them at the neighbor girls, but we missed. Jeremy's mom made us lunch and after lunch we went to my house. It was strange, but I was kind of having fun with my enemy. He almost seemed nice, but of course I couldn't tell dad that since he had worked so hard to make this enemy pie. Jeremy Ross liked my basketball hoop and he said he wished he had a basketball hoop, but they didn't have room for one. I let him win a game just to be nice. Hmm, they don't really seem like they're enemies anymore, huh? Jeremy Ross knew how to throw a boomerang. He threw it and it came right back to him. I threw it and it went over my house and into my backyard. When we climbed over the fence to find it, the first thing Jeremy noticed was my tree house. Now, remember what was inside the tree house. My tree house was my tree house. I was the boss. If my sister wanted in, I'd have to let her. If my dad wanted in, I'd have to let him. And if Jeremy wanted in, can we go in? He asked. I knew he was going to ask me that, but he was on the top of my list. The only person on my enemy list. And, en and enemies aren't allowed in my tree house. But he did teach me how to throw a boomerang and he did have me over for lunch and he did let me play on his trampoline. He wasn't being a very good enemy. I said, okay, but hold on. I climbed up ahead of him and tore the enemy list off the wall. <sighs> I had a checkerboard and some cards in the treehouse, and we played games until my dad called us down for dinner. We pretended we didn't hear him, but when he came out to get us, we tried to hide from him but somehow he found us. Dad made us macaroni and cheese for dinner. My favorite. I love macaroni and cheese too. It was Jeremy's favorite too. Maybe Jeremy Ross wasn't so bad after all. I was beginning to think that maybe we should just forget about enemy pie. But sure enough, after dinner, Dad brought out the pie. I watched as he cut the pie into eight thick slices. Dad, I said. I sh it sure is nice having a new friend in the neighborhood. I was trying to get his attention and trying to tell him that Jeremy Ross was no longer my enemy. But Dad only smiled and nodded. I think he thought I was just pretending. Dad dished up three plates side by side with big pieces of pie and giant scoops of ice cream. He passed one to me and one to Jeremy. Wow, Jeremy said looking at the pie. My dad never makes pies like this. It was at this point that I panicked. I don't want Jeremy to eat enemy pie. He was my friend and I couldn't let him eat it. Jeremy, don't eat it, it's bad pie. I think it's poisonous or something. Jeremy's fork stopped before reaching his mouth. He crumpled his eyebrows and looked at me funny. I felt relieved I had saved his life. I was a hero. If it's so bad, Jeremy asked, then why has your dad already eaten half of it? I turned to look at my dad. Sure enough, he was eating enemy pie. Good stuff, he mumbled through a mouthful. And that was all he said. I sat there watching them eat enemy pie for a few seconds. 
dad was laughing, Jeremy was happily eating, and neither one of them was losing any bit of hair. It seemed safe enough. So I took a tiny taste and enemy pie was delicious. After dessert, Jeremy rode his bike home, but not before inviting me over to play on his trampoline in the morning. He said he'd teach me how to flip. As for enemy pie, I still don't know how to make it. I still wonder if enemies really do hate it or if their hair falls out or their breath just turns back. But I don't know if I'll get an answer because I had just lost my enemy. And that is the end of my book. So what happened was he lost his enemy because his enemy became his friend. And so this is gonna be a little bit of a stretch of a connection, but it's something that I really wanna talk with you about. So I think that during this time, now that we are learning content in school, that some of us may have an enemy. And our enemy may be classwork. Now, I know we cannot just eat pie or eat anything with our classwork, that our homework and our assignments aren't people and they aren't things and that they don't have emotions. But when we don't do our assignments, we think that they're enemies. We don't do our assignments because we think they're bad and we think that they're hard and that it's not fair and that I want to be in school. And unfortunately, you know, that's just not the reality of where we are. We need to do our homework. And with enemy pie, the only thing that turned his enemy, Jeremy Ross, into a friend, into something that was good and not bad, was spending time with it. So that makes me wonder, how much time have you spent trying to do your classwork and your assignments? Chances are, if you haven't spent that much time on them, you may be seeing them as an enemy. You may be seeing them as something that's bad or something that's unfair or rude or something that's just going to make you frustrated and upset. But if we follow the lesson in our story, if we spent time on our assignments and we, if we just gave it a shot, even for one day, they just hung out for one day. Even if we just do our assignments for one day and see how it goes, I wonder if those assignments will not be as bad as we once thought they were. I don't know, but I hope that you are brave enough to try it out, that you're brave enough to try to work on a classroom assignment for at least a day. So that is my challenge for you today to try to open up Seesaw and Google Classroom and to do an assignment that's reading or math. Let's just narrow it down to those two subjects and see if one of those assignments that just seems so bad and so hard and so complicated is actually kind of sweet and not so bad. It doesn't have to be your enemy during this time, okay? So let me know how it goes. Know that you are my friend and that you are so miss. I care for you so much. And I hope that you will watch another one of my videos soon. Bye.